History has it that silk production was the most zealously guarded secrets in the world. For more than 30 centuries, it remained a monopoly of China, reserved for Chinese royalty at first. But now even farmers in Makueni have joined in the production of the luxury fabric. This is premise of Tosheka, Tunaita Greenage. Na hapa ndiyo tunafanya mass production ya silk or eggs. Na ndiyo tunadistribute tuna kwa farmers. Ndiyo wazilisha ya lafu wazirudisha zikiwa kukun. Here farmers get disease free eggs which within 19 days will be ready for harvesting. Since uh, the worms are very tiny at their initial stage, we do them in batches. So a farmer receives a batch of 10,000 worms and from the 10,000 worms he's supposed to bring back 20 kgs of uh, cocoons. And it does not require you to go out of the other normal duties of farming. You only need to get the castor leaves and you leave them there uh, and you go doing your own businesses. Uh, during lunch time you also change the leaves because they eat so fast. Now what you're seeing is uh, worms that are in the second insta and uh, they tend to grow as big as uh, six to seven centimeters. When they get to that stage, that is when they cocoon and uh, they spit the fiber that is we use. Uh, and we buy them as cocoons, the whole fiber plus the pupa that has formed inside. For control purposes, only a few of the pupa will be allowed to develop into butterflies, which then produce the eggs and then the cycle starts again. A pair of butterfly, uh, after mating and production of eggs, uh, they produce 300. So with that in mind, you can't let 10,000 butterflies, so they are controlled. And the way we control it is we select the cocoons that are healthy, and a male and a female, and place them in a cage where we call the dark room. And the rest of the pupa is uh, oven baked. We also eat the pupa of the silkworm which is nutritious, is like the energy biscuit or the, the jugu that we, we, we do. Although we use it for, feed, for feeding the fish and the chicken, but it's very nutritious, so you can eat it and you enjoy. So whoever wants to eat with me, you can share. The silkworm farming has created three different value chains, the silk for the textile industry being the primary product. Tosheka Textiles is the market here. The pupa can be used for fuel production. A Japanese investor has already positioned himself for the product from this enterprise. The castor plant that feeds the silkworm also produces seeds that can be processed into castor oil as well as fuel. We have a potential buyer from China. In fact, he's doing a factory in Kilome sub-county. So we'll have uh, the value chain going on through, so there will be nothing to do to waste. This program in Makueni can be replicated in hot parts of the country where the type of silkworm known as airy thrives best. The other thing about the airy, we like it's a hardy worm. It hardly gets diseases and uh, that is why we took it because uh, it's not like a mulberry that needs a lot of care and protection. And uh, so the other thing, it's a very, it's good for blending with other fiber. So we can blend it with cotton and we can blend it with wool. It's very blendable. And uh, it has thermal properties. So when we are selling it, it's the next fiber, silk fiber worldwide. This production house in water turns the silk into exotic fabric after spinners make thread from the yarn. Raw silk naturally can go to at least a 4,000 uh, 4, uh, meter depending uh, but it depends with the kind and the kind of blends you have done but, um, done the process and we, co we get the floss a kg is supposed to give you like uh, one kg is supposed to give you like 28 meters of fabric with the collapse of the cotton industry silk farming became the better option for farmers here in makweni county putting at least six thousand shillings into their pockets at the end of every 19-day production cycle jobs for the weavers and spinners and beautiful fabric for the textile industry. Selvice Bet, Citizen TV, Makueli.